Today, we will be looking at the issue of debt sizing and project finance transactions. First, let's review the key terms that we use when we talk about debt sizing. CFADS is the cash flow available for debt service, and it is EBITDA less tax payments, less capital expenditures during operation, and less working capital adjustments. Essentially, CFADS represent operating cash flow available to pay the interest and repay the principal of the loan. Maximum debt service, which is a sum of interest and principal, is always equal to CFADS. Debt service cover ratio, or DSCR, is a measure of the ability of the project to pay the debt service, and DSCR is defined as CFADS divided by debt service. So, if DSCR is equal to 1, then debt service is equal to CFADS. Therefore, as we said, CFADS is equal to the maximum of debt service. And finally, project riskiness manifests itself in DSCR, interest expense, and additional risk mitigation measures taken by the lenders that may also influence the debt size. Sizing the debt is essentially answering the question of how much debt lenders can lend to the project. Since lenders will only be repaid from the cash flows generated by the project company, the cash flow available for the debt service is an important variable for debt size determination. The larger the cash flow, the larger the debt size will be. Next is the issue of risk. The higher the project risk, the less debt can lenders extend to the project company because high project riskiness will result in high DSCR and interest costs. Project economic life determines the debt size. The longer the project life, the longer the debt tenor will be, and longer debt tenor means large debt size. And finally, the debt repayment profile also affects the debt size, sculpted debt repayment profile, which is usually used in project finance transactions, results in a large debt size compared to the level or annuity debt repayment profile. The project risk will manifest itself in two important items related to debt financing. The first is the DSCR, and the second is the interest rate spread. DSCR measures the downside risk of the project, so riskier projects will have higher DSCR, resulting in lower debt size. The second item is the interest rate spread. Typically, project finance debt will carry the floating interest rate, which consists of the base rate and interest rate margin. The base rate is the cost of borrowing for the banks, and the margin or spread reflects the riskiness of the project. The interest rate spread typically consists of credit risk and liquidity risk. So, riskier projects result in higher interest rates, which, again, reduce the debt size. And finally, risk mitigation measures that lenders take, particularly during project operations, will also impact the debt size. Often, lenders require the project to fund and maintain the debt service reserve and maintenance reserve accounts during the debt tenor. Since these accounts have to be funded by cash flow that remains after debt service, it means that there have to be enough CFADs to pay the debt service and then fund the reserve accounts. So, if cash flow after the debt service is insufficient to fund the reserve accounts, debt size has to be reduced. Let's take a look at the DSCR equation and derive the debt size from the formula. DSCR is equal to the CFADs divided by the debt service, which is the sum of the debt principal repayment and debt interest payment. So, let's rearrange the equation so the debt service appears on the left and the DSCR moves to the right. So, here, we can see that the debt service is equal to the CFADs divided by the DSCR, and this is how the sculpting is done. We sculpt the debt service based on the CFADs and a constant target DSCR. To obtain the debt size from this equation, we have to move the interest payment from the left to the right. So, subtracting the interest payment from the CFADs divided by the debt service will give the debt principal amount and the sum of the debt principal repayments is equal to the debt size. Note that the higher the CFADs, the bigger the debt size is going to be. The higher the risk of the project, the higher the DSCR will be, which will result in a smaller debt size. And the higher the interest rate, the lower the debt size is going to be. The debt size equation that we have reviewed is one way to model the debt size in the project finance model. Another way to size the debt is to take the present value of the debt service. The discount rate used in the present value formula is the debt interest rate. We will see in the next lesson how to carry out debt sizing in Excel. 
The minimum required DSCR are different across industries, reflecting the riskiness of the industries and projects. Most recent transactions have seen the following DSCR across industries. You can see that mining has the highest DSCR, and this results in significantly lower leverage usage in the mining industry compared to toll road projects with government guaranteed revenues. The reason for high DSCR is that the mining projects suffer from multiple risks that have to be taken by the project company and ultimately by lenders and the project sponsors. First, there is the price risk of the commodity. Second, there is the risk that the mining project will not be able to produce the forecasted quantity of the commodity, which depends on the mining project's geology. The geological risk is also entirely taken by the project company, and therefore by lenders and the project sponsors. The list of risks taken by the project company and the mining projects is long. Therefore, the majority of the mining projects are finance-based on the balance sheet financing.